Uh, right now, let's uh, talk about, uh, uh, well, uh, consumer issues generally, prices rising, not just your water bills, but also, of course, what you're buying in the supermarket. And uh, yesterday, we saw supermarket executives hold before MPs uh, to talk about why we've seen so many soaring prices on the shelves. Let's talk to Harry Kind. He's a consumer journalist at Which. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed. Well, of course, you know, we're seeing bills, energy bills. You and I have spoken about that before and water bills going up. Um, just before we get to the supermarket issue, is there mm. anything people can do, you know, as consumers to deal with things like these bills going up? Because, of course, the supermarket, you could go to another supermarket that might be cut price. You could perhaps, you know, buy cheaper versions of products. But, you know, your water company is your water company. Your energy company is your energy company. What can people do? Yeah, and when it comes to water particularly, there's no shopping around. You know, you can't go, I'm fed up with Thames water, I'm going to go down to uh, any of the alternatives. Yeah. Really, you do, you are stuck. Oh, a bit worried. We've lost some sound there. Harry, have you... Ha uh, hello, Harry, can you hear me, my darling? Oh, dear, we seem to have lost his line. Let's try and get him back up. But I know Russell Quirk is still with me, his political commentator. You're, you're always delighted when a line goes down. It's, we get to great. more of a chat. I, I get um, to be a th more. This is, you can't shop around. Now, uh, this is the weird thing. It's a privatised system, as with energy. We have been able to shop around on energy, but I, I'm, I'm with Thames Water, one of their 15 million customers, um, and yeah. I don't get to shop around. And, and that, of course, is a problem, even though this is supposed to be, you know, privatisation and so on. It isn't really a free market because, yeah. of course, it's effectively a monopoly, and that perhaps is how to change this for the better. Yeah, we kind of got the worst bits of the privatisation the worst bits of, yeah. of, of public ownership. No Harry, we got you back again. Well, I was about to criticise broadband companies, and so I think something happened and I was cut off. Then <laughs> the, the, power the, irony. the irony. The irony. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I, it's, it's one of those things where water you can't really do much about. You can go to the Consumer Council for Water. They're the people to complain to when it comes to water mm. if you have real major problems, and, and they can sort out compensation if you've been cut off. But really, yeah, as a consumer, that's where you have the least power is water bills. Yeah. When it comes to broadband, your energy, there's lots of shopping around that can still be done on broadband bills and mobile bills, particularly if you're out of contract. And I'd say it's probably one of the easiest ways to save money for most people yeah. is when you're out of contract, shop around and move on from your energy. And, and also, even, and, even, and even just tell your company, I'm going to, there's an option, you're thinking of leaving, oh, they will be offering you anything to stay, it's always worth just, and again, if, I don't know what people's hourly rate is, it's, if it's not worth your while spending an hour or two doing that uh, to save a few hundred quid, then, I mean, goodness me, you're, you're on, you've got more money than sense. Um, let's talk Absolutely. about the supermarket. So senior executives from the big four, that's Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda and Morrison's were questioned by MPs on the Business and Trade Select Committee yesterday over claims that they were engaged in a, quote, a grotesque profiteering and behaving like a cartel uh, as families are struggling to make ends meet. And that's fueling inflation uh, because people are saying, I need a pay rise because I can't afford my weekly shopping bill. Is there any evidence of this? Well, we have seen profits at the major supermarkets, uh, for most of them, raise over the course of the pandemic, basically. So pre-pandemic, uh, Tesco, for example, was making something around one and a half billion. After the pandemic, in the last couple of years, that's been closer to 2.4, 2.5 billion. Now, in that period, we've seen the costs of food as a wholesale price go up. We've seen the costs faced by consumers go up. Yeah. And so it's pretty impressive that they claim to be more competitive than they've ever been mm -hmm. while also making these extra profits. So they are uh, they are making extra pockets profits because I, I would have quite a lot of sympathy for any business putting up their uh, their prices on the basis that they've got, you know, increased costs of staff because mm -hmm. you're having to compete for staff. We've seen those wage rises, and thank goodness people working in the supermarkets, by the way, the unsung heroes of, of lockdowns so they were there every day. Um, while we were clapping for nurses. Um, but also, you know, they've got energy costs. I mean, the huge costs of, you know, the freezer units and, and the lighting and, and, and all of that. Uh, and the energy costs involved in the production of a lot of the food, the transport costs, the cost of fertiliser. I mean, they have seen huge, huge rise in their costs. Understandably, they're going to have to pass a lot of that on to us. But you're saying that actually they're also passing a lot of it into their own pockets. Yeah, so take energy bills, for example. Because these supermarkets are so large, they were able to hedge a lot of their energy bills, be able to kind of uh, get themselves locked in at a very low rate early on. And so on those levels, if you read their earnings reports, they're very proud of how much they've managed to cut their costs there. But what we think is, even without cutting their prices across the board, they could be doing a whole lot more to support their customers. And we think that, you know, we didn't hear any good answers from the supermarkets yesterday. It was all the same 
same old, same old. And so we think probably the government needs to put pressure on the supermarkets to support their customers in ways beyond just lowering prices. And then also the, the Competition and Markets Authority is going to look at the supermarkets and see whether any of these suggestions of the being anti-competitive, if there's any truth to those, and to see whether customers are facing fair pricing. Yeah, indeed. Thank you so much, Harry Kind, consumer journalist at Which. Thank you for that. Um, coming back to you, Russell Quirk. I mean, this is the thing. We, you could definitely shop around. And we've absolutely seen how much people have shopped around. They've moved from... It was interestingly, it's the, it's the middle-ranking supermarket. In fact, those big four, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Asda and Morrison's, who've, who've lost out to the Lidl's and the ad, you know, oldies that have come along. And it's interesting that the Waitrose and M&S were carried on doing OK because people weren't going out for dinner. Yeah. Um, but, well, you know what? I'm going to treat myself to a half decent meal at home. Yeah, I think one of the allegations, though, of course, yesterday that was tackled was whether there has been big inverted commas here, Julia, cartel like behaviour. Yeah. Uh, as in the supermarkets directly or indirectly, officially or unofficially, colluding over raising prices. And of course, the supermarkets all, mm. uh, you know, said that that was certainly not the case. Um, but I think most consumers would look and think, well, it can't really be a coincidence that just everything went up and actually sometimes by the same proportion. Um, the big thing here, though, I think is fuel and I think we really need to take a much closer look at the fuel companies because of course famously whenever wholesale fuel costs go up prices go up very quickly yeah. when they come down they don't come down very quickly yeah. um, and of course that is the biggest driver of inflation as is fuel duty yeah. so uh, the government's in charge of that one yeah not just fuel duty at 52 pence a litre but VAT, VAT on top of that so absolutely and there's far there's far for the energy companies there's far more money going in tax than there isn't going in profit but it would almost kind of suspend all of our inflation woes if they were to mitigate that yeah. as a government immediately. It's, 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 the pain, answer. it's painful, isn't it? It's, pain, it's, it's, it's rare that lower taxes isn't the answer, actually. 7.31 is the time. I'm uh, going to take a call uh, in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to talk about the NHS strikes. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's another major topic this morning. Just getting used to that, though, now, aren't we? Uh, this is Talk Breakfast. <laughs> 